Hey everyone, Jamie from iMeasureU, and in this video we're going to discuss the basics of inertial measurement units, or IMUs, and what they measure. So, let's start right at the beginning. What are IMUs? So, IMUs are small, non-invasive electronic devices with multiple sensors. These sensors usually include an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and or a magnetometer. You can then attach these units to a specific body segment, and then they can measure acceleration, angular rate, and or orientation of the body at these specific body segments. So let's just take a closer look at these sensors used in IMUs, as each sensor has different capabilities and uses. So if we take a look at the accelerometer, they can detect changes in speed. A gyroscope detects changes in the orientation of the sensor, also known as the angular velocity, whereas the magnetometer measures the magnetic field of a location. Okay, so that's just the basics of the sensors. But let's take a deep dive into one of the sensors, the accelerometer. So what is an accelerometer? So accelerometers can detect changes in speed in one, two, or three axes. Let's focus on the three axis or tri-axle accelerometer and what they are. So they can detect changes in three dimensions, but what are these axes? So these axes are known as the X, Y, and Z axis, and they relate to movement forward and backwards, up and down, as well as left and right. So he has an example of this by Dr. Clint Hansen using a mobile phone. A bit of background on Dr. Clint Hansen. He's a biomechanist and researcher at Christian Albrecht's University with a wealth of experience in motion capture as well as IMUs. The acceleration is measured in meter second square. So let's just try to move it into one direction. So I move it into the screen. So now we can see that the X shows up certain uh, parameters. So in our case, it's the acceleration in your direction and backwards. And that goes for all the other directions. So now we can have a look at the Y direction and obviously in the Z direction. Okay, great. Now that we understand what axes are, let's take a look at another important topic relating to this, the peak resultant. So the peak resultant is what is provided to you in IMU step, and it's an equation involving the accelerations in the X, Y, as well as Z axis, and this provides you with a single unit in either Gs or meters per second squared. This is important as the underlying bone has been subject to all the accelerations in these axes. So what are Gs though? So G-force or gravitational force is acceleration of an object relative to the Earth's gravity. And here's an example of that. A free-falling body travels at 9.8 meters per second square, which is essentially or approximately equal to 1G. So an important topic when discussing accelerometers in Gs is the range of these accelerometers. So the range of an accelerometer is just the maximum speed it can detect. Here's Dr. Clint Hansen explaining why this is so important. Another big point is ranges. So the sensor range. Because what we don't want when we are measuring accelerations, for example, if you remember the uh, kicking example that was shown in the video, the guy kicked the ball and there was a result flashing in 175 G. Wow, impressive. But the problem is, if my accelerometer does not allow me to measure 175 G, then it will saturate and we just get the maximum that the sensor is capable of spitting out. So we are going into the same example again that I was showing before. So now we are looking at 500 hertz running data. We can see the sensor is located on the foot, so we can clearly identify all the events that we are really interested in. But this time what we're doing, we are clipping the signal. So artificially, I removed the ranges that we are mainly interested in. So the very high range is here. So this is the full range up to 100, let's put 70 uh, meters second square. So now if we clip at 10 G, what happens? Well, we only get data until 100 meters per second square. And if we go even further and look at 5 G, well, the information is very limited. Okay, so the last two topics we're gonna look at in this video is sampling frequency as well as placement of the IMUs. So what is sampling frequency? Simply, it is just the number of data points per second. And this sounds very basic and simple, but here's Dr. Clint Hansen once again explaining why this is such an important topic. 
and we can get data with up to 1,600 hertz. So hertz again is frames per second. That means we have 1,600 1, data points per second. So why is that important? Well, it's important for multiple reasons. So if you have someone running, for example, and you want to get a good understanding of the behavior of the foot strike pattern of the loading, and we measure something with a relatively low frequency, then we have an issue because the issue will be that we lose some kind of information compared to a higher frequency. This is not a real life example. This is just an example to make you understand that a high frequency is sometimes needed in order to get some kind of information. So if we're looking at a sport specific, um, at a sport specific example, then I would go for running because running is a relatively fast um, movement. And if we sample now, it's the same run, but I've down sampled our, um, the original data set that was captured with 500 Hertz in our lab. So we have here the vertical acceleration and it's meter per second square again. So now we can see that we get actually a reduction in the information that we have for the same heel strike, basically, depending if we're measuring with 500 or even 50 hertz. So there's a huge difference. Okay, so the last topic we're going to look at is placement of an IMU. Does the placement of an IMU matter? Simply, yes. The higher up on the body or chain the unit is placed, the lower the measurements. This is due to what we call propagation of impact. And here's Dr. Clint Hansen describing the differences and what they look like with sensors placed on different parts of the body. If you're looking always at the vertical acceleration of the signal, so always upwards, um, what we can see is that the acceleration on the third metatarsal bone level was relatively high and reduces the higher we go up the chain. So here it's up to 10 G maybe. Over here it's up to seven or eight. When we're looking at the femur or the knee level more or less, then we get only five G maybe. And if we're looking at the greater trochanter, well, then it's even lower. So another example of the same data set that I showed before is, again, 500 hertz sampling rate. And now we are looking at the same run, but this time we have three IMUs or three accelerometers on the person. And we can see clearly that there's also a lot of different signals that we get. If we have an accelerometer on the lower or on the lower limbs on the foot level, we get very high accelerations in the vertical direction, not so high accelerations on the lower back. And the signal completely looks different when we're having an IMU or an accelerometer on the arm. All right, so that concludes level one of the IMU Academy. Well done, but if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to any one of us.